Um, hi. All right, hello guys. Welcome back to my channel. If you're brand new here, my name is Nikki and this is my book nook. And today I wanted to do a little bit of a different type of video for you guys today. Basically, I finished reading If We Were Villains by ML Rio a few days ago and I have not been able to stop thinking about it because it reminded me so much of a book that I read earlier this year that I absolutely loved. It is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. This is an absolute cult classic. The people that love this book love it. It becomes about half of their personality, which I can say that I understand now because honestly, same. Whenever I read this book, I just felt like it was so different. Like I had never read anything like it. I was kind of driving me crazy because I couldn't figure out what kind of genre it even was. I'm like, is it a thriller? Is it a mystery? Is it just literary fiction? It feels so kind of like old and haunting and, you know, beautiful, but a little scary. It's just different. I don't know how to explain it. And once I finished it, I was like, I want to read other books like this. Whatever it is, I want that. And so I'm very happy that I decided to pick up If We Were Villains because God, these books could absolutely be very close first cousins. They are so similar. They definitely have differences, but a lot of crossover, a lot of mirroring, um, just the same sort of vibes. So yeah, I pretty much just wanted to talk about all of that with you guys today. Sit down, yap, and ramble for a little bit. And um, yeah, if you've read one of these books, I promise you, you will absolutely love the other one. Um, if you loved it, of course, if you didn't like it, you're probably not gonna like it. And in that case, I don't really know why you're watching this video, but anyways. <laughs> Yeah, let's just get into it. So when talking about these books, I feel like it makes the most sense to reference The Secret History first because it is the one that I read first. It is the older book. It is the more popular book. So that is why I'm going to kind of constantly be referencing back to this one. But just to kind of start out the basic premise of these stories, the kind of things that are similar. First of all, The Secret History is set in the 80s in a small town at a small liberal arts college in Vermont follows a group of college students, there are six of them, and um, they are all in this Latin program, where <laughs> If We Were Villains is set in the 90s in a small town at a small liberal arts college in Virginia. It's absolutely Illinois. No idea where Virginia came from, moving on. Where seven students are studying theater. So right off the bat, you're like, okay, that sounds super similar and it definitely does uh definitely it was a little jarring for me reading this book because i was like wait i feel like this is so similar to this which it is but right away the difference in the theater versus the latin sort of aspect of what these students are learning creates for a very different experience but not just that um <laughs> there was a the main character in secret history his name is richard a very main character in if we were villains is also named Richard, which is very odd. But also, if you have to think about it, like Richard was a common name in the 80s and the 90s, so I guess it's really not that crazy. But both of these books, like I said, set in the 80s, set in the 90s, but they are also sort of set in the present day. The way that they are written, the way that they are told, you know, present day, that something happened in both of these stories in the past. Something with this group of students went awry, there was something tragic, something that kind of sent the group their separate ways, um, something in the realm of uh, <laughs> a crime related incident. You get hints of all of that in the beginning of this book and it's kind of told from the point of view of this male narrator and you are then kind of jumping back to the past and seeing the story through his eyes. And as you're reading it, you kind of learn that he is an unreliable narrator in a way because it is a story which again six people in this book seven people in this book you know there's a lot of perspectives here there's a lot of going on a lot of things going on and i'm sure if you talk to any one of these characters they would have a different view of the events that took place but we're only getting the one side so i just always find that very interesting to kind of have a story where you know you're being fed what happened but you have to kind of question is this really what happened like were the right choices made is this how things had to go so i love that feeling all throughout the book and also like i said these books are set at these like small colleges and these small towns it's just a total like dark academia experience through and through which is something that i am so into there's just something so like haunting about this kind of setting it's just feels like 
it's on the verge of fantasy even though it isn't it just feels like they're in their own little world and um just like the college aspect of it it's very tight-knit it's just a very particular time in people's lives where they're kind of coming of age there's a lot of like curiosity happening just a lot of like complicated sort of relationships people that are friends somebody likes somebody somebody likes somebody else they like each other just a lot of crossing paths these two these people all spend a lot of time with each other because they are in classes together but then they're also partying on the weekends like a lot is bound to happen and the thing about these books is the relationships within them are really what the entire story is about because you know like i said that a crime of sorts happened in both of these books and you have these you know this group of friends they are very close but both books make you question like how deep does friendship really go and you know when you have to be selfish to some extent to protect yourself or selfish with your heart or you you know care about someone and someone else is in that in the way of that or you have a goal and someone is keeping you from that how close really are you to these people are they your friends or are they just your classmates like how far are you willing to go for the people that you care about like that's just the theme that runs all throughout these and something that is present in both of these books is there's like some major bi curiousness happening or just straight up gay curiousness i don't even know how to explain it there's just <laughs> i love these books because you have this friend group of you know co-ed boys girls and at no point do you know like wait are they just friends or like is there something more happening here like in some way or another i'm like feeling in every scene that happens between two people i'm like are they able to kiss right now <laughs> like that happened all throughout these books and frankly i love it i love a story that keeps me on my toes i was a big fan of the movie Saltburn. If you guys have been watching me for the last several months, you will know that because I've mentioned it about a hundred times. And these books both gave me vibes of Saltburn. So if you were one of those people that went to that movie and you didn't understand all these people that were just shocked by it, they were like, oh my God, that was the craziest thing I've ever seen. Instead, you were just enamored with it. You wanted more of it. Again, you were like, what is this genre of story? Because I'm into this where you just don't know at any point. Like who's about to make out who's about to kill somebody who's about to <laughs> go insane maybe it's me i don't know these books are that truly they're that um the secret history i feel like it has a little bit less of a story structure than if we were villains does this one is very you know perfectly sort of split up into i think five parts it's kind of interesting this one because it has that theater aspect to it that's what really differentiated it from the secret history because these are all theater students they are into like the high arts they are into like shakespeare type of theater and you could tell ml rio knows their shakespeare front and back because there was so much shakespeare throughout this story i mean you see the characters acting in plays all throughout you see different scenes that's happening between them which again that's like such a fun element because you know these people are have real relationships with each other but then they're now acting on stage and these lines are being delivered and they're putting on a performance but it's like is this a performance or is this how you really feel you know they're having to like fight in these performances a lot of the times there's just a lot to it but yeah you see a lot of shakespeare in their performances but also the friends like communicate in lines from Shakespeare a lot. Like someone will ask a question and then someone will just rattle off some, some, some Shakespeare. Some Shakespeare. That's a mouthful. Can you say Shakespeare five times fast? Um, lots of Shakespeare. So if you're a fan of that, you will love this. I will say, and you would have heard me say this 10 times if you watched my reading vlog where I read this book that I posted recently. Um, Shakespeare is something that has always felt too advanced for my brain. I loved English class growing up. It was my favorite. I obviously love to read. Shakespeare, for me, I need someone to sit there and dissect every single word in line with me. And when I understand it, I love it. But it's not something that like flows naturally for me and something that I can read and just like comprehend right away. So there were times for me where that got to be a little difficult, especially in the beginning. I kind of felt like I was skimming a little bit on the Shakespeare parts, but it's weird a little over halfway through. It's like I just got a little more used to it. And it's like I was maybe gaslighting myself into thinking that I was understanding all of it. 
who knows, maybe not, but it made a very fun element to the story and honestly I just love any time that you can tell in a book that like an author is really passionate about something and like put their blood sweat and tears into researching it and incorporating it into their book and that was definitely done here. Um, so that just adds a whole other element to the story, the whole like acting part of it, the theater part of it, where the secret history, you know, they're learning Latin and so you see them in Latin class, you see them having a lot of like sort of intellectual conversations about history and you know what happened back in the day and um it's a very intellectual book like i felt like this book made me smarter in a way while i was reading it i was not a big fan of college to be honest but reading this i'm like wait maybe i could go back to school like maybe i could be a scholar like maybe i could have these intellectual conversations i don't know but um yeah this book felt a little more like a stream of consciousness to me which I loved I mean you saw so many just like interactions and people hanging out and conversations and you know going to dinner and slowly a story started to kind of unfold about halfway through you're like wait okay something's happening here the sort of big event that you're waiting on happens and then everything kind of like snowballs and just shit absolutely hits the fan by the end of this book which kind of happens in this one too I mean there is a crime that occurs there is something that happens there is a mystery element to it where you're trying to figure out what happened and that's what's kind of different about the two of these two is that and I'm not trying to give anything away but in the secret history something happens in this group and you get to kind of see it play out like you find out in the beginning of the book because you are from the present day that like oh this happens like you're literally told on the first page this thing's gonna happen. So for a good chunk of the beginning of the book, you're like, how could this possibly have happened? Like, what is gonna lead to this? But when it does happen, you see it play out and you know exactly what it is. And then from there, the rest of the book is kind of like the aftermath of this event and how they're going to sort of get out of it and figure it out. Where if we were villains, something happens, but you as the reader have no idea, like, who did it basically or who was responsible or how it could have happened and you don't find out until the very end and that was really fun because it was just very suspenseful it kept me on my toes i mean both books are suspenseful but it's just done in different ways and um yeah just seeing it all play out and seeing the relationships up until the very end you just don't know and both of these books the main narrator they are really similar and like I said, they're kind of an unreliable narrator, but at the same time, you can tell they're kind of a person that's very unsure of themselves. They kind of are a bit of a people pleaser. They really want to belong. They want to fit in. They they both, you know, are going to these sort of elite colleges that cost a whole lot of money, and they both come from families that don't have a whole lot of money. So they do have some insecurity around that, some financial sort of struggles. Bringing it back to Saltburn, it just reminds me of, you know, the main character in that sort of way which funny enough the main character in if we were villains his name is oliver which is the main character in saltburn which is weird but yeah they kind of have this like insecurity to them and this kind of you can just tell they don't really know who they are and they they want to fit in and they want you know they want to do well but both of them like in the latin class and in theater they are not the best they know they're not the best they're very aware of that yet they have this like deep passion for it and they really just want to be a part of this group and they both kind of have crushes on people within the group that they just think that there's no chance they will ever get them but then they kind of have this like self-awakening of you know a, a kind of confidence that happens to them where they kind of have this moment where they think that they can maybe have it all it's just so interesting to watch it play out. I just loved both of these stories. I, if I had to pick one, it's hard because they, they're so similar. Like you can tell just by me explaining them that they're so similar, but they also are really different. And I don't know how to explain it. I, the secret history has to win for me, just personally, just something about the vibes of it, even though they are similar vibes, this just feels like a comfort book that like I said I want to read it a hundred times over I feel like if I reread if we were villains there there will be you know as always some things that I would find on the second read where I would be like oh like maybe I missed that or because that's another thing too about both of these books there's a lot of characters so in the beginning you're kind of figuring out like who's who what's the connection between all of them like what do I need to know about them and so that's why I think both of these books can really benefit from 
multiple reads because this book especially if we were villains I felt like it took me like the first third of the book to know who the heck was who and to kind of like understand and because there are you know you have like the seven main characters but then there are other characters happening in it as well so trying to get all that straight it took me a while and I feel like once I got to the halfway point and I really understood it it all made sense I was like okay so I think I could totally benefit from a reread of If We Were Villains and I'm sure I would like it better on the second round but The Secret History I just these characters have stuck in my brain they literally haunt me in my sleep there's also some more just a little darker elements to this what happens in this book is dark it is you know an unfortunate thing but there's some more kind of like this was a little bit more out of necessity I would say the bad thing that kind of happens not necessity good god I sound like a psycho but this this has some more psychological elements to it where you're like dang did that really have to go down the way that it did the answer is no but now you're just questioning like who is sane in this scenario who is not you know what happens in this book really affects all of these characters for the rest of their lives and this one does too but not quite the level of this and is anything that i'm saying making sense <laughs> this video is me yapping unintelligibly for probably 15 minutes who knows um but yeah guys I don't know what the point of this video was I just kind of wanted to talk to you guys I just couldn't get it out of my head like how similar these two books were how much I liked both of them if you guys have read both of them I would love to hear from you which one is your favorite if you have a favorite if you can pick and please I am begging you if you have any more books that remind you of either of these please leave them in the comments because like this is the genre I want to read in 2024 I'm saying that we're over halfway through 2024 but still the rest of the year this is what I want especially going into fall like I know we just started summer technically but I want a list of recs so the second we get to September 1st like I can be reading nothing but dark academia mystery slash thriller slash maybe dark romance I don't even know like what this genre is once again but I know that I love it I know that I'm a fan of it and I feel like I have to be forgetting something because there's just so much about both of these books, but I think I covered most of it. So I have to make myself stop talking at some point. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I love you so much and I will talk to you very soon. Bye.